Hey everyone, welcome to Kim Yin Yoga. I'm Kim and this is Sin. <laughs> and today I want to guide you through a series of postures that are just wonderful for the spine. So let's get started right away. To begin with, we're going to go flat on the back, which is going to be meaning His Highness is going to have to move. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, shashi. Oh, shashi. Yep. Take your time in yin. We don't rush. <laughs> Getting flat on the mat. Okay. He's kind of doing the pose already. He can guide you. All right. We're flat on the back, legs out long. We're just going to do a full body stretch. Okay, and arms down to the sides. <laughs> Pet the cat. Palms on the mat. We're going to start with what I call Wigalasana. We begin and end with this, and the epicenter is the pelvis. So it's just like it sounds. I am going to wiggle the hips, shimmy uh, from the sacrum, shimmy like I'm dropping a pebble into the pond, and the ripples are traveling out through the entire body. Deep breath in, and exhale, exhale it out. <sighs> All right. To start with, now that we've loosened that up, we're going to Put the heel, plant the heels at the wide uh, side of the mat, and shoulder blades flat on the mat. Walk the left foot over to meet the right, and then I'm going to kind of shimmy my upper body over to the right as well, creating, of course, the perfect banana shape. And from here. You might, you might be fine like this. You might lace your hands and place them over your abdomen and just feel the sensation of the side body stretch. Or you can grab your left wrist and just add a wee bit of traction. Also, if you need more edge, lift up the left foot and place it over the right and that's going to add something new. But we aren't stacking the hips, we're not rolling the hips. Basically the pelvis stays flat and we go into this beautiful half moon banana asana. We're going to take three long slow deep breaths here. As we exhale out the third breath, come on back to center with the upper body first. Then left foot goes right back down to the left hand corner of the mat. Right foot comes over to meet it. So the second side is the counter pose to the first side. And I'm going to just kind of work my shoulder blades over to the left. And again, arms might just be up overhead and that gives you enough stretch or you might want to grab your wrist and add a, a bit of traction. And you might want to just slide your right foot over the top of your left. We could have three long, slow, deep breaths here. As you exhale the third breath out, relax the arms, bring the upper body back to a nice straight line. This time the, the feet go to the mat, knees up to the sky. I'm going to, I call it Charlie Horse, uh, thumbs with all 
four fingers together and I'm just going to charlie horse my hips. So the thumbs are over the front of my hips, my fingers are to behind. And I'm just going to do a little mini bridge, lifting uh, with my feet, but helping with my hands. And then place the, f the lumbar spine flat on the back. And to keep it flat on the back, I'm maybe pushing a bit into my feet to keep some traction there. And my abdomen's turned on, my core is drawing to belly button to the back of the spine. A deep breath here. And then X. Exhale it out. As I exhale it out, feet come together in butterfly, reclined butterfly, Supta Baddha Konasana. And here it's just all about gravity and letting go. If it, there is strain on the back here, you can grab a towel or blanket. On, if you like props on either side and just slide them into where it feels like you're still getting a stretch, you're still getting edge, but it's not uh, over, feeling like it's over stretching and where it might over be over stretching is feeling like it's creating too much of a, a, a compression in the spine. So I'm focused on keeping the spine Towards, it's not going to be flat, flat, <laughs> but towards the idea of more cat than cow. And you can just rest the palms of your hands on your elbow creases, which would be very tricky. But you could rest the palms of your hands on your hip creases, elbows by your side. And we'll just be here for a couple minutes. In yin yoga, the goal is to take the pose and find your edge. The edge being the place of strong sensation. It was described to me as if no edge, utterly at peace and no sensation, was green. And shooting, stabbing, jump out of your skin pain was red. Edge is orange. It's in between. Go to the orange. And we'll have three long, slow, deep breaths here. And as you exhale out the third breath, take your hands and go ahead and give yourself some help here, bringing the knees together. And go ahead and with hands, uh, uh, palms of the hands on the knees, give yourself some nice round circles. They can be kind of out here. You can even lift the head in kind of a rolling hedgehog if you want. Do what feels right for you. Take breath in, and on the exhale, go ahead and we're going to roll over to the side. And we're just going to push right on back up into cat cow. My hands are directly under my shoulders, wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. My spine is neutral. I'm going to take a deep breath in, nose up to the sky, I'm pushing up out of the mat, I'm allowing the pelvis to rock, I'm staying here, breathing, another deep breath in, and on the exhale I'm going to rock it the other way into cat. 
These are slow motion cat calves, which you've gathered by now. There's no rush. I'm pushing right up out of the mat. I've got energy going into my knees, into my feet. You can feel this Halloween cat hissing. <laughs> Deep breath in. And then bring it back to neutral spine. Walk the hands forward, and from here we're going to visit Down Face Dog. One of the most amazing postures you can do for your meridians. It wakes up everything. You might want to pedal it out a bit here as you move into the posture. Go ahead and do what you need to do before you find stillness. And we're just going to be in this stillness for three long, slow, deep breaths. It's going to amount to about a minute in down dog. If at any point your wrists uh, tell you they have to stop, if any part of your body says, okay, that's it, we're stopping, go straight down into child's pose. You'll find the more you do the practice, the stronger your bones and joints and ligaments get. the longer you can go into this down dog, Adamuka, it's a resting posture. One more long, slow, deep breath in. And as you exhale it out, come down to the knees. If you were in child's pose, come up to the knees. And we just walk it right on back to a modified hero's pose where I'm going to get a good foot stretch out of this. I've got my bum on my heels. If that's too much of a stretch, you can do it from up on your knees or down in a more traditional hero. I'm going to stretch the feet while I got the chance. And from here, we're going to do one lion's breath. So, you know lion's breath, deep breath in, then on the exhale, tongue out, eyes rolling up to the ceiling. And here we go, deep breath in, lion's breath, tongue out, eyes up to the ceiling. <sighs> All right, walking it on forward from an extended, um, it's almost like an extended child's pose where we bring the hands forward. I'm going to, we're going to thread the child here. I'm going to raise my left hand up and then right on through to the other side. <laughs> threading, the, threading the child here. My knees are under my hips. I'm getting this beautiful stretch which I can fully uh, the twist I can fully control with my right arm. I might lift my hand up to the sky. I might slowly let it open towards the right. I have conveniently have a wall here that I can also use to leverage some traction and really give the shoulders as well as the upper body, the upper thoracic spine nice twist. You can also take my hand and come around in a bind. So from here we'll just have three long slow deep breaths. If you can close your eyes or find a soft drishti, you'll start to go in and feel and connect with the body. On the third exhale, untwist the arm, bring it on down, back, or it may already be here, and slowly up you come. We'll drop back into an extended child's pose for one kind of a pranam stretch. 
deep breath here and then we'll do the other side. I'm going to just turn around so I can keep an eye on you. So from all fours and I'm walking, I've got a neutral spine, I'm walking the hands out, lifting the right arm up this time, threading the child. Down it goes. And I can keep this left hand nicely placed in front of my face, or I can lift the left arm, I can open up the left shoulder, or I can bring it around in a bind. Find what works for you today, but find stillness. Three long, slow, deep breaths here. And as you exhale out the last breath, unravel if you're in the bind. Slowly bring yourself back up. And we are going to flip on over to the final pose before Shavasana and straight on into sleeping possum. So legs are up in the air. Your knees might be bent. That's absolutely fine. They might be straight. You might flex your feet, point your feet, get your hands up with them. Point, 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 and then just let everything go. Be the sleeping possum. Shoulders melting into the mat. The spine is melting into the mat. If you want to get real relief of the spine, try bringing, your knees might be bent, try bringing the knees forward. If your legs stay straight, bring them forward, and you'll feel that beautiful compression of mat up against the back, giving you all the support in the world. Just let the blood drain the other direction. One more long, slow, deep breath here. And as you exhale it out, Toes together, knees wide. Catch your knees with your the elbow creases. Grasp the wrist. And Manchak Chi, I'm just going to press. It's an isometric. I'm pressing into my elbow creases. My knees are trying to escape. I'm holding them in. Deep breath in. And then exhale, exhale, exhale. Everything out. Legs go out long. I'm going to have a full body stretch. Lengthen through the spine. I might stretch one leg down, then the other. Oh, and on the exhale, bring the hands down to the mat. And I'm getting myself centered on the mat a little bit better. And from here, final posture. To go into it, we're doing the Wiggle Asana, which means from the center, the epicenter of my pelvis. It's a shimmy. It comes from the sacrum. It's like dropping a stone into a pond, rippling out through my entire body. It takes practice. It's worth learning. Deep breath in. Keep wiggling. Exhale out in stillness. Roll your palms up to the sky in receiving mode. Breathe naturally. Let everything go. Inhale. 
if you want, stay here. We can bring thumbs to third eye, namaste, right here, right now. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.